Hello, my fourth grade friends. Today is an exciting day. We're starting unit two. So uh, in the front of your book, there's a parent letter and it's in English and in Spanish. Um, I'm going to read this out loud to you because it kind of gives you, the child, a, a pretty cool understanding of what we're about to do. But when we're done or even like in the middle of the video, if you pause it, you could rip this page out and go give it to your parents. And then if they're trying to help you with something, they'll see what we're doing, right? Okay, so it says, Dear Family, In this unit, your child will be learning about the common multiplication method that most adults know. That's important because your parents may have never learned this model. They might just only have this model. And, you know, that's the truth for a lot of people. However, they will also explore ways to draw multiplication. Math Expressions uses area of rectangles to show multiplication. So here's the area model and the area method and then the shortcut method. And it's all for, like, this is the number 37 times 24, 37 times 24. So get your 600 by the 30 times 20, the 140 for the um, 20 times 7, the 120 from the 4 times 30, and the 28 from the um, 7 times 4. So those show up still here, but this is the 100 and... 128 yeah the four yeah the 128 120 and the hundred oh the 120 and the 28 are right here and then the 740 really when I did this and as a kid we always put the zero there so the 740 is the 600 and the 140 that's it was throwing me off a little bit okay so your parents might have the zero there in their mind too Area drawings help all students see multiplication. They also help students remember what numbers they need to multiply and what numbers make up the total. Your child will also learn to find products involving single digit numbers, tens and hundreds by factoring the tens or hundreds. For example, if you're dealing with a problem like 200 times 30, what we'll be doing is we have the break down or decompose the 200 into two times 100 and then break down the 30 into 3 times 10, and because of the commutative property, the commutative property of multiplication, we can have the order switch around. So then we just have 2 times 3 times 100 times 10. And then we just do 2 times 3 is 6, and 100 times 10 is 1,000, and then 6 times 1,000. Well, now that's really easy, right? It's just 6,000. So by observing zero patterns and products like this, your child will learn to do such multiplications mentally. If your child is still not confident with single digit multiplication and division, we urge you to set aside a few minutes every night for multiplication and division practice. In a few more weeks, the class will be doing multi-digit division, so it's very important that your child be both fast and accurate with basic multiplication and division. That is really important, and we're going to start doing some flashcards as well um, to go along with our, you know, practicing of our facts, so stay tuned for that. If you need practice materials, please contact me. Sincerely, your child's teacher. All right, same thing in Spanish. Let's get started with lesson one. So, um, model a product of ones. The number of unit squares in an array of connected unit squares is the area of the rectangle formed by the squares. So you might remember having those like pink they're orange and purple, and you make a row, and then you make a couple rows, and then by then you have columns, just like that. Then you remember drawing lines inside of rectangles, and then you end up having something like this, and then you might remember even labeling the sides. These are all basically the same thing. It's two by three, right? Two times three. You can draw, oh wait, I think I put right here. We sometimes just show the measurement of length and width. You can draw a rectangle for any multiplication. In the real world, we use multiplication for finding both sizes of arrays and areas of figures. A two by three rectangle has six unit squares inside. So two times three equals six. And here you can see 
Um, and we have, you're gonna need your math board for this one. So you can see all these little dots. We're not talking about the number of dots, we're talking about the little lines that you would draw between the dots. So using the dots as a guide so things are straight and easy to count and the same size as we move into, you know, different, you know, um, proportions. So once you draw those lines in there, you can see that this is a three by two, just like that, and yeah. So on your math board, we're gonna draw that. So go ahead and get your math board, get a marker. If you do have a skinny marker, like mine is a skinny little marker like that, it's helpful, but um, you can still do it if you have a bigger marker, a little harder. So draw a three by two rectangle. How is the three by two rectangle similar to the two by three rectangle? How is it different? So, um, we usually say length and width in order. So this is two long and three wide. So we'll do one that is three long and two wide. Okay. So just because we're just starting out, I'll start in the middle. So three long, one, two, three, two wide, one, two. Two. And then I could even go ahead and cut the lines like that. No. So think, how is that similar? How is it different? All right, I'm gonna write my answer. You can continue thinking, pause and write your answer and then check and see what I wrote. Okay, so I was about to write it's about the same size, but then I thought, wait a second, it is exactly the same size as the two by three rectangle. It just looks like it's been turned on its side. So if we take our paper, turn it this way, these look exactly the same. They're the same size, right? It's just turned. How do the areas of two by three and three by two rectangles compare? Well, this one has six square units and this one also has how many six square units right so they both have six units squared or six square units these aren't inches these aren't centimeters so we're just calling them units all right let's turn our page over to the back. I'm going to erase this here. Okay. Now we're going to talk about what we read in that letter about using um, the commutative property of multiplication to use that to our advantage when dealing with really big numbers like things with tens and hundreds and thousands and stuff like that. So this is a two by 30 rectangle. It contains two groups of 30 unit squares. We're factoring the tens to multiply the ones and tens. And factoring means breaking things down into um, the factors, the things that you multiply together to get that number. So in the same way that addition has partners or add-ins, multiplication has factors. Okay? And the product is the answer instead of the total. So this two by 30 rectangle contains three groups of 20 unit squares. So it's just, you know, set up differently, but it's the same thing. This two by 30 
rectangle contains six groups of 10 units squared, so its area is 60 squared units. How can we do this numerically? That means with numbers. Complete the steps. So, in the same way that you can have two by three and three by two, you can have the shape and then just break it up into different ways, right? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have our two by 30, that's two times one, or two ones, multiplied by 30, which is how many groups of 10? Three, right? Then we're going to have our two and our three move to the front of the problem and our one and our 10 move to the back. In some cases, this might be a 10 and a 100 and they would move to the back. For now, it's a one and a 10. So then we have our two and our three. Then we're gonna simplify this problem um, and we're gonna multiply our two times three, which hopefully you know is six and our one and 10 is 10, and then we just have six times 10 is six, right? So rather than dealing with 30 times two, we had six times 10. But either way, it gets us 60. On your math board, draw a 30 by two rectangle and find its So, This one was wide, ours is going to be tall. It's um, 30 long, two wide. So I wanna point out on your math board, there are these little plus signs and these little sort of like degree thingies. Um, and these are to help us because I don't know about you, but I don't really wanna be like one, two, three, four, five for the rest of this unit. So let's count it once and then remember what these symbols mean. So starting at this corner with the pluses on the bottom, I'm counting from this dot here, and I'm gonna see how far it is to like this next plus or see where a 10 is, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, we're counting the lengths, not the dots. So let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So at this plus, I've reached 10, okay? Uh, let's look at the circles and just double check and see if that's about the same thing. So down for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Let me make sure I did that right. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So right after that circle, that's our 10 marker, okay? So I'm gonna use this line because I already drew it, but instead of counting all of these, if this is 10, what does this one have to be? 20, right? So I'll just go whoop, and then if this is 20, what does that one have to be? 30, right? I'm just gonna go whoop. Whew. So glad we decided to do that. Now uh, the width is gonna be two. So one, two, one, two. And then I'm just going to connect all the way down. And because these are right angles, um, I know that it is the same distance on the other side of the rectangle. Okay, so we drew our, we should label it, of course. So let's label, this is two, and this is 30. If you wanted to, you could even slice it like that. Slice it like this. And if you really love counting, you could count each one of these boxes, see what you end up with for the area. I don't know about you, busy gal, love counting that much. I mean, you gotta do it when you gotta do it, but uh, let's think about our math here. We have two groups of 30. That's like saying, 
we have two groups of one and three groups of ten. We have two times three, six, and then ten times one, ten. We're gonna have twelve. So how is the this rectangle similar? How is it different? I want you to think about your answer and then come see what I wrote. Um, Like um, on its side. Okay. All right. So if you want to, you can keep drawing some of these rectangles. I promise you we will have more drawing with our math board in this unit. Um, so thank you for joining me today. Welcome to unit two and I'll catch you next time. All right, everybody. Bye-bye.